Today marks 25 years since a serial killer began his cross-country killing spree in the Twin Cities. In the end, five people will lose their lives, including renowned fashion designer Gianni Versace. It all began in Minnesota, where the first two victims were killed. You're sure that it was Andrew Cunin? I'm 100% positive. Esme Murphy traveled the country to cover the case 25 years ago and has continued to follow it ever since. Today, for the first time, she's sharing newly uncovered questions surrounding the Minnesota deaths. So that was probably, I want to say it was like a Saturday. Chisago County Sheriff's Deputy Chris Henricks remembers the call to an unlikely homicide scene. He was lying about right here. In the he had a defensive wound where you could see where he actually probably put his hand up and a bullet had went through it because he was actually struck like in the eye area. The body would turn out to be that of David Matson, a successful 30-year-old architect from Minneapolis. David Matson's body was found about 200 yards from where I'm standing on private property in a wooded area just off of East Rush Lake. It's an obscure area, one that's hard to find, a location that has baffled investigators for decades. There is some connection to Rush Lake. He, I mean, he, it's not a deal where you just, I'm going to drive an hour from the city, so I'm going to murder this person. David Matson turned out to be the second victim. The first was Jeffrey Trail, a Naval Academy graduate. He was beaten to death with a claw hammer and rolled in a carpet left in David Matson's loft in the Minneapolis Warehouse District. In a period of 12 weeks, five men were murdered. The last, Gianni Versace, gunned down on the steps of his Miami Beach mansion. By then, investigators knew they were looking for Andrew Cunanan, a 27-year-old from San Diego. Investigators went back to the beginning and determined both Madsen and Trail had dated Cunanan. Posters went up in gay nightclubs around the country. 25 years later, though, we learned that investigators never went to the hub of the Minneapolis gay nightclub scene, the gay 90s. Did the Minneapolis police ever come to you and come to the gay 90s and look for any kind of evidence or people to talk to? Never. Witnesses would say they saw Cunanan at the club. Mike Bloom, the owner then, is convinced he talked to Cunanan, who was having coffee in the bar's early morning hours. And it was like about 8.45 in the morning. And we weren't that busy at that time. And he was sitting like in a back booth. So we wanted to start talking to him, me and the bartender. It's weird that I can picture who he was then. He said, yeah, I got some stuff I got to go do you know, down in the loft. To talk to him for about 15 minutes, very nice guy. Bloom's account is consistent with numerous sightings of Cunanan in the downtown area, all before Cunanan was named as the killer, but after Jeffrey Trail's murder. At some point there is a connection. But what was that connection? Could a more aggressive investigation of the first two murders in Minnesota have prevented the next three murders? Eight days after he murdered Gianni Versace, Andrew Cunanan died by suicide from a gunshot wound. He was in a Miami houseboat, almost certainly killing any chances of answering all of those questions. Yeah, it's hard to believe it's 25 years. It there's, is. there's still so much interest in this case. You know, they had movies made, miniseries and all that. But like you said, a lot of unanswered questions. Right. And these, these victims were all really wonderful people. They had great lives. They had people who loved them. Andrew Cunanan did not. And in, in the end, that may be one of the reasons why they were killed. Mm. Uh, they were closing in on him, if I remember, when he took his own life. Oh, they, yes, they yeah. were closing yeah. in because it was eight days. The entire nation was looking for him, and they closed in on that houseboat. Esme was closing in on him, too. <laughs> I, I remember all <laughs> that reporting. We thought you were going to find him <laughs> before the police, yes. but yes, Esme. All yeah. right, thank you. Uh, Esme's reporting on the story spans a quarter of a century, traveling all across the country searching for answers. It was a fascinating tale. It's uh, far more than we can share, of course, on one newscast today. But if you'd like to see uh, more of the coverage, it continues on WCCO.com. That's where you'll find a comprehensive comprehensive report looking back at the Andrew Cunanan murders. And we're also going to stream some of that tonight at 8 o'clock on CBS News Minnesota.